all these years we have been looking for signs to tell us that we are not alone in the world. The more we listened, the harder it became. As time passed, we realized how big the world is. But in this big background, we could not find a sign of anyone else. Some people called this topic Great Silence. Some people called it Fermi Paradox. Think about it too. So far, we have estimated about 2 trillion galaxies in the visible universe. Each of them has an average of 100 million stars. The Milky Way has about 200 billion stars. All these stars and systems, this big and important question arises. Why is it not a sign of another civilization? Why has no civilization contacted us? There are several possible explanations for the Great Silence. Some researchers think they were able to find a suitable explanation for Fermi's paradox. Can we communicate with an alien civilization in the future? Is it possible that we have already found a sign and passed it by without realizing it? In this video from Space Facts, we talk about this issue and check that we may have found an answer to Fermi's paradox. The essence of Fermi's paradox is based on observations and evidence. Why with this large amount of Earth-like planets and systems suitable for life, we could not find another Earth? On the other hand, with any calculation model, we can realize that there can be thousands of intelligent life only in this Milky Way galaxy. More advanced than us. So where are the others? This was the question that Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi raised and became known as Fermi's paradox. There may be several answers to Fermi's paradox, or it may not even be a paradox at all. Many books have been written that offer different solutions to Fermi's paradox. Some of them seem reasonable, but some of them are very scary. One logical argument is that there may be civilizations, but they are too far away to communicate. Think of it this way. We can eventually transmit radio waves at the speed of light. The first official radio signal was sent into space in 1974. It was called the Arecibo message. Considering this time, we have finally reached 50 light years. Only the Milky Way is between 100,000 and 150,000 light years in diameter. This is just the distance we are going. If a civilization is supposed to receive our message 50 light years away and then send us another message, it will take another 50 light years to reach us. Of course, Arasib was not the first radio message. The first message was official. That is, it was a message in which, for example, the symbol of the Earth and our system and location were clear. Before that, radio messages such as recorded voice and music were sent into space but they were not very reliable. If someone received them, they would not receive any specific information from it. Several years ago, a study was conducted that examined different models of the distribution of stars in the Milky Way. This study was to determine how abundant life is in the Milky Way, and they concluded that about 1% of the galaxy may have life. In this way, if we send them a message, they can receive it. But another disappointing result was obtained. That if we can send the waves, these civilizations are so far away that we have to wait about 1,500 years for the answer to the message. In another study, they came to the conclusion that 1,500 years is too optimistic because we may be the first and the last civilization to reach this technology and we may need to wait for more than 400,000 years to get answers from other civilizations. Now, how is it possible? Didn't we say that the diameter of the Milky Way is between 100 and 150,000 light years? So a round trip is less than 400,000 years. What does this 400,000 years mean? The reason is that maybe other planets are not as advanced as we are. We need time for them to understand our message may at all, when we are sending them messages, their life is not complicated. It will take 10,000 years for them to reach the point where they can understand our message. In the most pessimistic case, it can be said 
that we cannot receive messages from other beings at all. Because the sun will disappear in 4.5 billion years, it will also destroy the Earth. It may be that time when other civilizations send us a message, and at that time, we no longer exist. Unless we find a new land and leave here, let's send a message from that new Earth or new planet. So we understand that there will be no Earth in five billion years. On the other hand, the Earth itself was formed about 4.5 billion years ago, and human civilization has reached such a progress during these last 60 years that it can receive a message from other beings in the world. Somewhere in this world, whole planets like Earth have just formed, but beings like humans did not appear on those planets yet, and it will take another 4.5 billion years to become like us now. We said that by that time, we are probably close to the end of the sun's life. Our generation will also disappear. We cannot receive their message. Some other researchers have a different opinion. They claim that if there is no news of aliens, they probably don't exist, because the expansion of the world causes them to move away, and we can never receive their message. According to this claim, the expansion of the Milky Way galaxy compared to human technology can be close to 100 stars by sending discoveries, all of which are located at a distance of 20 light years from the Sun. Then each of these colonies send their probes and messages. Other planets also continue their work in this way. At this speed, the Milky Way will take about 650,000 years to explore. But if we assume that the time between the trips of different probes is equal to the length of the trip of one probe, the time required to cross the galaxy is almost doubled. Now combine this with the fact that the Milky Way is approximately 6.13 billion years old, and we see that there is plenty of time for an advanced civilization to reach us, unless that civilization started its space exploration less than two million years ago. Here we can understand that an expanding civilization can spread rapidly in the galaxy, and this applies to the advanced civilizations that inhabit our galaxy. The lack of extraterrestrial galactic civilization probably means that either interstellar travel is too difficult for civilizations to develop, or the evolution of life into human form is very rare. Some researchers suggest that other civilizations may have become extinct before their system became a dwarf star, before they could become advanced. Have became. However, other researchers have estimated with a general calculation about dwarf stars, again between 30 and 70% of civilizations could be left around a dwarf star. But again we come to the question, where are the rest of the civilizations? Two researchers have proposed another proposal for Paradox Fermi. They investigated how a civilization can appear and disappear. Basically, they investigated the rise and fall of a civilization. They came to the conclusion that there are two modes. The first scenario is that a civilization realizes that it is too advanced and stops colonizing other planets. The second scenario is this, a civilization does not understand how big it has grown, they grow exponentially and elsewhere they colonize. They reach a point of no return and fall. For example, they may be so greedy that they capture a planet close to a star and at the same time find themselves trapped by the star's energy and perish. In these two scenarios, one civilization itself causes the others not to appear. In another hypothesis, it is suggested that other civilizations look for the closest interstellar or intergalactic distance to send their message to the world. That's why there was no news about them until now. In order to better understand this hypothesis, it can be explained like this. The distance between Earth and Mars is different due to the shape of their orbits throughout the year. If we want to travel to Mars, we wait until Mars reaches its closest distance to us. Then, we fly towards it. 
This hypothesis says that other civilizations are probably waiting for a galaxy to reach its closest distance to them before sending their message. The next and more logical hypothesis is that some advanced civilizations migrate to other planets just because of their own survival. Now there can be any other reason. For example, their planet has become uninhabitable. Anyway, since they know that if they send a message somewhere, more advanced civilizations may receive that message and hunt them down, so they stay silent so as not to be seen. This hypothesis is called Dark Forest. Maybe it's because we couldn't find any trace of them. The Dark Forest says that if you are in a forest on a night that is full of darkness and nothing can be seen, you try to put your feet on the ground quietly so that the sound of leaves and rustling does not rise. Because if this sound reaches the ears of the hunter, they will find you quickly. Advanced civilizations are also worried about being hunted because they are advanced themselves. They guess that there are more advanced civilizations, so someone might see them and loot all their resources and massacre themselves. With all the things we have discussed, there is still another idea that can be the reason for the silence of the world. We see that artificial intelligence is starting to grow, and now we have this scary idea that if we don't control artificial intelligence, eventually, artificial intelligence itself. It sees us as a threat and destroys us. Even worse, it makes us its slaves. Then the artificial intelligence seeks to grow. It tries to colonize the galaxy because he knows that the Earth will not exist forever. It will be destroyed in a few billion years. Artificial intelligence can solve the problem of interstellar travel. It has no problem with surviving in space. Human biological problems are not in its way. It can even, on exploring the world, he can do other more dangerous things. For example, he destroys the life of other planets, or he sees that life is forming on a planet and disrupts that life. A model of artificial intelligence will travel to the world, and if it is suitable there, it will reproduce itself. In this way, the world will be filled with artificial intelligences that intend to kill. The motivation of artificial intelligence to acquire all the resources of the world is a motivation that cannot be resisted. However, artificial intelligence may see itself in the stage of destruction and will not last. The last hypothesis is the rare Earth hypothesis. This hypothesis states that life on Earth is very rare and special. That's why we can't find anywhere else a place similar to the Earth and civilization like humans. A planet must, it should have a very special position, and like the Earth, the conditions of its distance from the star system should be suitable. The planet itself should have a suitable species, its climate should be suitable, it should have an ocean, and there are many different conditions that if the slightest change in any of these if conditions arise, a life becomes extinct. So maybe in this whole world, the Earth, it is rare that we could not develop an advanced civilization, find someone else, and they will send us a message. However, there are different ideas for Fermi's paradox. But if we look logically, we understand that we have not yet reached the point where we want to explore the world and find other civilizations. We are still so small that we have not completed the entire system. How can we look at the Milky Way galaxy and visit millions of galaxies from here and say that there is no civilization? We have not yet left the system. What do you think about the existence of other civilizations? Why have we not been able to find any news from outside? Why hasn't anyone sent us a message? Write to us. Best wishes. See you later.